Hello again. Uh, I'm just going to show you a few little paint application techniques. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is use this old makeup brush and I'm going to show you how to do a simple wash. So it's quite a good idea to, um, to make a wash for underneath your painting or if you want to cover a big area um, it's a really nice thing to do. So just the idea with the wash is that you're going to use plenty of water. I've mixed my colours together, we don't want them straight out of the tube. Um, and it's just as simple as that. <clears throat> That's a really nice way to, to cover a big space. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is we're going to have a play with some wet paint. So um, again, I'm going to mix my colours. I've got a blue and a brown. Um, I quite like that <clears throat> as a combo. It's nice and earthy. And we're just going to paint on lots of nice thick paint. Now if I want to slowly mix that, I can start to add perhaps a little bit more brown. And it's a really good stage while your paint is still wet to start blending your colours. Because they mix on the paper as you go. Now if you want to get really tricky, <coughs> uh, you can start to scratch into that, which is quite fun. Especially if you feel like you um, are more comfortable with drawing than you are with painting. Um, and you can scratch back into that. Nice way to add some highlights or a little bit of definition in something that you're doing. Um, applying wet paint, you can also use a piece of cardboard. So I'm just going to show you with a bit of white here over the top of what I've already done. And you can apply that either really smooth or you can use the hard edge and sort of scrape it on and off as you go. Another really nice effect, you can use anything. If you've got a palette knife, go for it. You can also get a nice kind of rolled effect. Okay, so a little bit of dry brush. I'll pick up a brush, hopefully it's not too wet. And the, the, the key with dry brush is just what it says, is that you're going to pick up a little bit of paint and then you're going to take most of it off. Okay, and then you're just going to scumble. You don't always just have to scumble. You can paint it on however you like, really. Uh, I'll maybe add a little bit more colour. If you want a dry brush and strokes, that's fine too quite nice you can see the brush marks which is good and it's a really <clears throat> good way to build up some subtle subtle layers paint on paint off wax on wax off okay that is dry brush um Another quite fun thing to do with some wet paint is um, I'm going to load my brush up a little bit and I'm just going to use this piece of paper and we're going to do a little bit of masking. Um, I'm going to get some quite dark paint this time. Just hold your edge down, just as you would if you were going to stencil. Okay, that's quite a nice way. Or you can use the rough edge or the torn edge as well um, for a different effect, but still get a nice crisp line. You don't need masking tape. Um, you can probably do that with some quite thick wet paint as well. I'm going to just try that out. And there you go. I'm having a brush that's um, that's a little bit furry on the ends. I don't know if you can see that. Um, <clears throat> it's still possible. It's still possible to get a really nice edge. Now, one of the things that we often do is we, when we first start to paint, is that we try and paint a nice line, and we get this really hairy, hairy edge. But if you pick up your paint, make sure you've got your brush loaded up. And I'm just going to put my hand on that, it's a bit wet. 
and you just take your brush from side to side uh, you should be able to get a relatively nice sharp edge that way uh, especially if you want a solid edge when you're painting around something, around the shape of something. I'm just going to show you a couple of those techniques when we're actually painting something. Um, I'm just going to mix up my little bit of paint, um, a bit of blue, a bit of brown, because I just want that nice earthy, bluey, greeny colour. And I'm going to start painting um, over here. Now I'm going to use that technique I showed you to get that nice crisp edge. It doesn't matter if your paint dries, because you can always do another layer. Don't be afraid to move your work around as you go. So I'm going to start to add a little bit of white and you can see, hopefully, that that is starting to blend with the paint that I've already put down. And I'm letting it just dry brush across the middle, trying to create the illusion of three-dimensional space. Um, and we all know that we do that using dark and light. Okay, so sometimes it's really good, especially when you're just learning to paint, to um, to have a really limited palette, one or two colours, plus black and white, and then you can play around with that um, without it getting too confusing. So now that I've got to that stage, now that I've got to that stage, I might just add a couple of little highlights using a softer brush because I want to really point out where the light is and I've mixed in, <clears throat> this is mixed quite a lot, so in the end getting messy. I'm going to come in from this side, there's no point me coming in from this side and trying to paint that, so because I don't want to go over that edge, I want that edge nice and light, and nice and crisp. So again, side to side. And I'm just going to take a little bit of paint off my brush now and I'm going to dry brush those edges and that should hopefully help um, the layers blend in. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side but I'm going to add tiny bit of black. Now I want to wash the white off my paint though because I don't want it to go all pastely grey. You've got to be really careful when you're using black and white because it spreads. Okay and there we have our um, sphere of some kind. Um, now if you wanted to get really tricky one of the things that you could do if we just paint something very quickly um, mix up my special blend again. Um, I'm just gonna do another one, but I know I need to work quite quickly if I'm gonna do this because I don't want my paint to dry completely. Um, is what we were talking about before with the scratching back. Can't find my scratchy brush, so I'm just gonna use this pencil. Um, the key is though to take notice because essentially you are adding you are adding line and we'll try and now get a little bit darker on the other side You can see that my brush strokes are moving in a kind of in a curved way because I still I want every mark I make to kind of explore that shape of the sphere. And that is my other little orb. Hopefully that's enough for you to get on with. Um, I'll try out some of those techniques and see how you get on.